What up, wizards? It's Dev, SB, and TG, and for some reason, all the babies are here. The whole family, by Igby, he just jumped off the couch, have come to join you for the not-really-final day of Outlaws of Thunder Junction spoiler season. The reason I gotta say it like that is because, yeah, we finished off the commons today, you're observant, but... There's still a whole like mini set left to spoil that we haven't really seen that many cards from yet. In case this slipped your mind or you never heard in the first place, Wizards had originally planned to do a whole like aftermathy kind of mini set for Outlaws at Thunder Junction that was going to release a couple months after Outlaws. But again, if you remember correctly, we all hated Aftermath so much. We were very vocal about it as a community. Matter of fact, it's the one thing we could all agree on. Really brought us together. Thanks for that, Wizards. But again, we hated it so much that they decided to scrap the idea for an Aftermath-like set for Outlaws. And in the end, they just seeded all the cards that would have been in that set into packs of the main set. And we've only seen a few of these so far. And a lot of them look like really wild and powerful and stuff. So that's going to start up like tomorrow, I believe. <laughs> so, and again, all those are standard legal. So we are not done with spoiler season yet. And I imagine there's going to be a lot of like really hype cards in that little mini set. So don't leave us yet. There's a lot more to talk about, but today was the common dump. I guess we usually call it. We got 40 different commons today. And a lot of them bad. There's bad cards. So what we usually do and what we did today is just sift through all of them and find the 10 best cards from the last day of main set previews. That's what we're going to look at today. Is that enough intro? God, that's like more intro than all the other preview videos this season combined up to now. So I think you're ready to start looking at cards. I guess if there's sort of an honorable mention for today, it's reprints. We got to see stuff like Corrupted Conviction, which is still in standard right now, actually, but it's surprisingly expensive considering it's just a Village rights? I don't know why it's like 80 cents for this card right now, so I guess I'll take the reprint. But there's also Skullduggery. I guess Skullduggery's back. Actually, a really interesting limited combat trick that blows people out. But there's also Snakeskin Veil. Maybe the actual most relevant reprint of the day, perhaps. It, maybe the set. I don't know about the set, but still. This is pretty good, at least in the Bant Toxic list that are running rampant right now. But obviously, there's a lot of green decks that can find a use for this right now, including the plethora of plus one, plus one counter decks that are desperately attempting to be a thing on Arena. But hey, uh, while you still got Snakeskin Veil fresh in your mind, why don't we take a look at the first new card from today that I want to have a read on, and it's Take Up the Shield. This is two mana, one and a white for an instant, but a plus one, plus one counter on target creature. It gains lifelink and indestructible till end of turn. Okay. I'm not going to spend all day comparing this to Veil. I think one could easily and successfully argue that Hexproof and Indestructible are very different abilities, but this card is meant to shine in combat, and Indestructible is pretty much inarguably better than Hexproof in most combat situations. This is going to be one of the most feared limited combat tricks in the limited environment. I'm calling it right now. This thing can catch you way back up and completely blow out your opponent all at the same time. Go. Okay. I don't think I love it in standard. I think we have a plethora of better like one mana options in most decks than this. But that said, there's a side of me that wants to give my Illuminator Virtuoso lifelink. Get in with double strike. I gain 20. Like it could easily happen, right? You've played Illuminator Virtuoso before, right? This card's going to gain you like 50 life pretty easily. So the card is pretty neat. And obviously there are decks that look like they want to leverage it. But do they have better options is the problem. Let's go ahead and move on to the next card I want to talk about. Because you play pretty good fiddle boy. But give the desert is due. This is two mana, one and a black for an instant. Target creature gets minus two, minus two till end of turn. It gets an additional minus one, minus one until end of turn for each desert you control. That's actually pretty sick. You can get this up to minus four, minus four like pretty easily. At that point, it's a technically better Grasp of Darkness, which is a pretty good magic card, but once you get this to tick up to minus five, then suddenly you've got one of the better removal spells like in standard on your hands. So the Desert's deck is actually getting some cool stuff. I guess if you want to do like green, black deserts, you got this. You got Colossal Sandworm, whatever it's called, like a four Man a six five flash trample that ridiculous thing so like <laughs> desert's deck is actually kind of looking up right now but let me be honest with you and myself i just really wanted to do that devil went down to georgia joke it was worth it but honestly the card is noteworthy at the same time so i don't mind pointing it out but let's move on to harrier strix here just a single blue mana for a void with flying and when it enters the battlefield you tap target permanent you can also pay two in a blue to draw a card and then discard a card I'll show you who's got the Harrier Strix. It's terrible. Either way, this is a cool little flying man, right? We actually have something akin to this in standard already. You know, it's a little artifact creature lady that kind of taps, taps this thing down whenever it comes into play. And she gets all the benefits of being an artifact. This isn't even an artifact, you loser. But what it does do 
is just draw you a bunch of cards if you have the extra mana. And that is a cool little activated ability if you ask me. And I think you did. You clicked on the video. I'm not sure how much this can actually do for you over the course of the game, but I do know that I've played a bunch of dailies lately. Like, oh, play this many white cards or blue cards or black cards. And I'm like, cool. What I'm going to do is put together a deck with a bunch of one-drop flyers. <laughs> I do it all the time. I've got mono black one drop flyers, black white one drop flyers, white one drop flyers, blue one drop flyers. I like playing flying men is all I'm saying, but they usually suck starting on like turn three, <laughs> turn four, you know, they start getting invalidated. So it's kind of nice to have a flying man that can actually do something on turn three once they played a 2-2 flyer and your game's over. I don't know, it sounds like a situation that's pretty specific to me. I don't know if it's relatable at all, but I always put together decks with a bunch of one-drop flyers and I wonder why they don't work. I'm an idiot, so let's move on to the next card, which is another card that I like, but I'm just not sure if anybody else will. This is Outlaw Medic. One in a white for a 1-3 human rogue with lifelink. When it dies, draw a card. Now, just like the last card, this card also has a current analog in standard that doesn't see a whole lot of play. You know, It's a two-drop black creature that when it dies, you lose a life, you draw a card. Very similar to this card, but this has like no real death. You don't lose a life when, you, when this thing dies, so I guess it's slightly better. But that said, I mostly want to point this out for limited because I've already said this a couple of times this season. This is now the third, maybe even fourth lower rarity lifelink creature that's only like two mana to cast. So I'm not saying aggro is completely shut out, but the presence of a common two mana, three toughness lifelink creature is certainly going to help make games go long. But hey, can we look at more creatures that do stuff when they die? I really like those. I don't know if I was clear. Sure. Let's look at Nizumi Link Breaker next, the single black mana for a 1-1 Rat Warlock. And when it dies, you get one of them 1-1 Red Mercenary Jams that taps to make a creature a little bigger just in the power department until end of term, but you can only do it as a sorcery. I'm trying to find creative ways to read this line of text this previous season. But yeah, it gives you one of them mercenary guys when it dies. So that's a D Doom Traveler, sort of, or a Harried Spear Guard, except the creature it leaves behind can actually block, or a Crawling Chorus, except the creature it leaves behind can actually block. Both these guys can block. I actually really like that about it. It's not something you see every day on cards like this. So big plus in that department. Really sweet for aristocrats, too. So I don't know. I like dudes like this. I don't know how many we have to have in standard to make aristocrats finally work, and only so many can actually fit into a deck, but you can bet I'm going to jam four of these and four Crawling Chorus into LSO Core and see if that's the secret sauce. I really doubt it is, but either way, I get to be excited about a new Doom Traveler. Next at technically number five, if you're keeping score, right in the middle of the list, let's take a look at Phantom Interference, a single blue mana for an instant, but it's a spree card. So if you want to pay an extra three mana, you can create a 2-2 white spirit creature token with flying. For an extra one mana, you can counter target spell unless its controller pays two. So that's just, that's just two mana. That's a miscalculate, you know, it's two mana. They have to pay two of their things countered, which is kind of the baseline rate. So we've seen a lot of these with gravy lately. And I think this is one of the better with gravies we've like ever seen, dude. Like make disappear is a really good card. And there's actually, I believe a card in standard that does this and can also like suspect a guy if you wanted to. So that's it's like not the worst gravy in the world. I don't mind some versions of this card, but this one's really good. You don't even have to use it as a counter spell late in the game. When a card like make disappear is garbage <laughs> happens to the best of us. There's, a lot of times we're like make disappear is the next thing we know we're going to discard to the whatever we have to discard to because like this card is bad it's turn six you know so with that in mind awesome mode to have on a card like that to make sure it's still relevant in the late game and yeah if they do try to cast the tracks or breach the multiverse or some ridiculous seven mana garbage on turn six you can just make your guy and counter their spell and i'm pretty sure they're blown out at that point I don't know if this immediately takes the place of Make Disappear in decks that Make Disappear is in. Because like the decks that Make Disappear is in right now actually play creatures, so the casualty mode isn't just like a dead, like a clown mode or anything. Like You actually do use casualty sometimes on Make Disappear, and it makes it a pretty freaking good card. So I'm not sure this sees like day one play in place of Make Disappear, but I do think the ability to eventually get a creature or just sometimes also get a creature is... Ed, you're playing you're playing with fire right there. It's uh, I just think it's a pretty solid card altogether. Let's hop along to the next card here. But first, I got to say, magic cards are too expensive nowadays. They just up the price on packs. Have you seen the price of collector boxes lately? It's highway robbery. That's also the name of a magic card in case you're listening and not watching. This is two mana, one and a red for a sorcery. You may discard a card or sacrifice a land. 
If you do, draw two cards. You can also plot this for one in a red. So kind of a tormenting voice. It's strictly better in a couple of ways. You, you don't have to discard the card or sack the land as part of casting the spell. So you don't get blown out as hard by counter magic, which is definitely worth pointing out. But also, it can be free. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> you know, a free tormenting voice on the turn that you get it is great, especially if you can bend something with it, you know, a big fat creature or whatever you're trying to do, you know, and then that very same turn, you have all your mana open to then reanimate the creature on the same turn. Actually seems very sick, cool with reenact the crime and stuff like that. I like what I'm cooking up, but I also like that you can sack a land to this. Believe it or not, there are decks that might actually want to sack a land to this. They do exist. Maybe they get some kind of value out of sacking lands or replaying lands out of their yard. Who knows? They got aftermath analysts. They're doing splendid reclamation tricks. But, you know, aside from that, there are just control -y decks that get a billion lands in play and late game, they rip this off the top. They do not mind getting rid of a land that they tap to cast this in the first place to just draw two more cards. That's pretty awesome. So, I don't know. I think this card could go places. It is so much more than just Tormenting Voice. And even though I don't love the sorcery speed, I do kind of like the idea of free and all I really have to do is sack a land, which can be a lot in the early and mid game. But later on in the game, can be an upside in some ways. But moving on to a uh, guess number three, if we want to be technical about it, let's take a look at another draw two. There's a few of these today. This is Seize the Secrets. Three mana, two and a blue for a sorcery. This spell costs one less to cast. If you've committed a crime this turn, draw two cards. Super easy to commit a crime, boss. I really wish this was an instant, but I'm pretty sure they know that if it was an instant, it would kind of be broke. Even at sorcery speed, I could see this being a very good magic card. It's kind of a chart of course that you have to work a different way to get to. And I feel like I've already said that about different cards this spoiler season. Just keep printing charter courses, different, you know, ways to draw to off of. But still, sweet little card here. I think it's a divination, like if nothing else. Just like strictly better divination, which is really not that much to get excited about nowadays. But two mana draw to and just you get to do that because you played magic. <laughs> I targeted my opponent's guy, I get to draw two. That actually seems like one of the cleanest lines in the world so i think this card looks pretty slick let's move on here fresh card we got to look at a land isn't that exciting it's conduit pylons now i can't read this card without kind of laughing at the name because i used to kind of almost like race cars sort of a little bit it was fun back in the day and so i can't see the word pylon without thinking big orange traffic cone <laughs> So despite the fact that there is art for this card depicting what is happening in the card, I still can't help but read the card and think like parking lot full of traffic cones. It's just like a really funny image to me because it's a magic card. Either way, it's also a land and it's a desert. Now, when it enters the battlefield, you're going to surveil one. Awesome. You're also going to be able to tap it for a single colorless mana. Or you can pay one and tap it to add a mana of any color if you want to, cowboy. Yeehaw, saddle up or whatever. I haven't really done a whole lot of cowboy puns this season. Wizards, again, been doing that for me. <laughs> I feel like they, got, they left none for the content creator, right? But still, I think... This card is really, really sweet. I build like an Oops All Colorless deck every season anyway, and I'm always looking for lands for the colorless deck. This is great, <laughs> especially if we are reanimating stuff with Portal to Phyrexia later in the game. We just dump a creature in our yard off the surveil. It seems cool, you know? So I think that more decks than just my stupid meme deck I make every season are going to benefit off this. Though. I think there's going to be a lot of decks that will absolutely take a surveil one. You guys remember when everyone's playing Crystal Grotto and Mono Red? Like, there was a point... <laughs> I swear to you, where people were playing Crystal Grotto in Mono Red because it gives them a scry. This gives you a surveil. That's like better most of the time than a scry. So I don't know, dude, a, just a free surveil on a land that doesn't interplay tapped. We've already seen these dual lands that all interplay tapped that surveil and they have been super, super important. So I don't want to devalue that kind of ability, especially on a land that doesn't interplay tapped. This thing might actually be king. But let's take a look at our lone rare from the day. It's Dust Animus. You can almost make it rhyme. It's two mana, one and a white for a two, three spirit with flying. If you control five or more untapped lands, Dust Animus enters the battlefield with two plus one plus one counters and a lifelink counter on it. You can also plot this for one and a white. Now, first of all, can I just say that a two mana, two, three flyer? It's not bad. You see, I make these flying decks. <laughs> He's actually, he might go in. I really like Voldar and Bloodcaster and Deep Cavern Bat and the two drop slot, but like maybe we can switch things up. Looks really good. Either way, great to plot. Super great to plot because you can just kind of set it and forget it. And then once you have all them lands, boom, you get a free giant 
flying lifelink thing. Actually, also seems like a really cool play for like Selesnya ramp decks if they need a two drop. I've actually played a little Selesnya ramp myself this season. Uh, incorporated slight blue, but not to counter spells, just for Colossal Sky Turtle, Shigeki Loops. I don't actually play blue in the deck either way. The deck's been a lot of fun to play and actually seems strong. You know what card's really good right now? Pro tip, just an extra tip take home with you that planeswalker nissa that you can complete for five mana or just play for seven mana or six mana and a completion that card's really freaking good right now as soon as it comes down it just wins the game half the time or more actually 60 percent of the time it works every time now that deck has been awesome and i could actually see this being an amazing a two drop play because you're going to get to five lands faster than other decks if you go like topiary stomper or something on turn three then by turn four you should theoretically have five lands and having this as a free enormous flying life linker that early in the game seems pretty ridiculous to me especially if you can give it haste somehow but just the defensive power of like a four or five flying lifelink and all of your untapped mana imagine if you i mean i don't even know if you have to go first but just lining up against any aggro deck you're gonna plot this early in the game maybe go ahead and ramp on your next turn get another land into play there's a situation where you're able to cast this for free and have all your mana up past turn and have Wandering Emperor up. I don't know how aggro really deals with like a four or five flying lifelinker and Wandering Emperor mana available to the deck across the table from them. That just seems like a nightmare scenario. So you can also, by the way, the way this works out and considering it's in the same colors, you can always just like sunfall the table on turn five. You do that, and then the next turn, because the, the lands have to be untapped, the next turn, you can play this guy and just have a giant life linker and whatever you got off the incubator token, by the way, too. So you probably can't do it the same turn you sunfall, but still. I guess if you needed a 2-3 flyer, like right now, just in case they draw Imidane's Recruiter or something, like you could sunfall and then immediately play this guy for free, you know? That's a thing you could do, so those plays probably matter. Either way, I like this guy. Like a good bid, obviously. I'm not sure exactly where he fits in, especially in like an existing meta deck on day one. I think he's kind of interesting in life gain builds and stuff like that, but I'm not even sure they squeeze him in. Well, that's basically it for the spoilers today. We did get to see all of the like, well, most of the breaking news cards that are going to be like the actual bonus sheet for the set. And there's some interesting stuff in there. Reprints of some expensive cards like Reanimate, Archivist Trap. And it's also worth noting that all these cards are going to be available to play in Timeless. I believe it is on arena. So timeless getting reanimate is great. And honestly, timeless getting archivist trap is pretty good too. Aside from that though, do remember, I want to remind you one more time that there's a whole like mini set worth of like basically all rares and mythics to spoil that will be standard legal. And we're going to start seeing in the next couple of days. So stick with the channel. There's a lot more, you know, spoilers that'll actually affect standard coming up in the next day or two. We're not quite done yet, but it's been a great spoiler season so far. So I hope you join me for the rest of it for now though. Just do all the YouTube stuff on your way out. Let me know how you felt about all the cards from today or any comments or uncommons or whatever that I may have missed. I famously missed Felidar Guardian in the common dump one time, and then it turned out to be an infinite combo that had to ban out of standard. Whoops, so I shouldn't have, should have probably picked up on that one. So who knows? Could you be the next person to call me on that ridiculous miss? <laughs> you know what I mean? So either way, just let me know if I did miss anything in the comment section down there. Hit the like button on your way out. Helps a lot with the algorithm and all that. We know it's hungry. It's horrible to be, you know, to have your whole life determined by the algorithm. So just throw, just throw a thumbs up its way. I promise it'll help me. But aside from that, subscribe to the channel. We're really close to 132K at this point. And of course, you can check out the Patreon down there. Just a dollar a month to down there is a description. I'm not pointing at anything like weird. Uh, just, yeah, in the description, you link to Patreon, dollar a month is all I ask. And you'll be able to vote on what deck text we do once we get to Cowboy Standard, which is what we're calling it. But for now, that is, of course, Allski Kowalski. So I will catch you cats later. I'm Deb from the place. Thanks for watching, wizards. Spread love and be kind.